Hi everyone, welcome to iSkate24.3. In this tutorial, I'm painting a roaring tiger by using Winston and Newton's watercolor. So let's get started. First, I'm creating the graphite sketch using the grid for guidelines. Starting it with the right side of the ear, adding soft handed details in it by sketching the long and short hair textured inside of it. Next, I begin with the nose and if you examine it closely, you will find a rounded triangular form as a guideline. After getting the basic shape, I'm adding details and blocking in the darker values to the nostrils. In materials, I'm using heavy Hansen sheet about 300 grams because thicker paper can evenly hold the moisture and using HP mechanical pencil for the sketch. Now starting the eye, for that, I'm marking a reference line at 45 degree angle, then I begin the structure of the eye and the iris. Also creating the black fur around the eye and you may be able to see that I'm not marking the harsh lines, all I'm attempting to create is neat and clean illustration, so there will be no difficulties at the time of painting. Here I'm marking the crease line at the bridge of the nose to develop the facial impression. Over here, I'm sketching the mouth and marking the guidelines to attain the basic shapes and add details. I'm drawing the upper teeth, the middle four teeth are the central incisors and the teeth after them are the lateral incisors. Furthermore, I'm drawing the canines that are the largest and the conical ones. Subsequently, I'm drawing its tongue, its wider and curvy above the apex area. Also adding light-handed details for depth and shading. Another important thing is that don't rush yourself and don't try to finish your painting in an hour or two. Better to follow your speed and take breaks whenever you need to relax your eyes because a good art piece needs a quality time with an active mind. So be patient and let things happen in a good way. I'm building the darker and lighter values at the bridge of the nose to the creases. Also creating the stripe pattern around it. Well, uh, all of us identify the different species of the wild cat with the pattern on their fur, like leopards have rosettes, cheetahs have spots on their fur, and tiger have white stripes, and so on, etc. etc. Right here, I'm adding the striped texture above the eye and their little curvy, which extends from the middle of the head and spreads around the face. They also have dotted pattern around the eye and the muzzle area. Tigers have unique and different patterns on the fur. I'm just sketching the design of the stripe uh, to this part of the face. After completing it, I'll switch to the other side. But remember, the pattern will not be the same. It's like an asymmetrical design. An interesting thing about the tigers, they have striped skin beneath the fur and that depigmentation of the skin creates a dark tone to the fur. Now, I'm drawing the long length fur around the cheeks and the jaw, they are known as ruffs. He also have a partial mane at the neck, so I'll cover that too. The best thing to improve your illustration is to draw then tracing. It might be time consuming but very helpful to improve your drawing skills. Follow your reference picture to start your drawing by keeping simple shape in mind. It will help you to create a three-dimensional object. illustration by sketching the stripes along the width of the body. Finally, our sketch is ready, so let's begin with the painting. I started with the outline of the eye by using a gray color. It's a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna water consistency. I begins with the main feature of the face, I mean the nose, eyes, mouth, to maintain the shapes. Now I'm filling the nose with light peach tone and there are two ways to create this shade. Now I'm using lime green as a base color in the iris. It's a mixture of cadmium yellow and cerulean blue. Then implement the burnt sienna around the pupil and at the shaded area I'm blending the colors with the moist brush tape and smudging it with the back and forth transition. 
Here I am using a creamy texture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to make the pupil more visible. For this I am using zero size brush. At this stage I am adding darker values to the outline of the eye. It's a mixture of burnt umber, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. So keep adding darker values but don't disturb the highlights. I'm using water consistency of gray tone around the eye once I build the deeper tones around it then start adding other shades it will enhance the depth and details with the help of white color I'm showing the subtle highlights inside the iris and add the lacrimal caruncle by using zero size brush To the left side of the eye after our greenish yellow wash now adding lime yellow to build a vibrant base right here i'm adding dark gray around the eye line it's a mixture of burnt umber and cerulean blue i'm also using other gray tones in the pupil i'm mixing the cadmium yellow and lime yellow to create the shine at the base color Applying more gray tones to produce darker effects and keep blending the colors and working in a color variation to produce a realistic effect but I'm not disturbing the shaded area with the highlights. Eyes are an important feature of the painting. Many people including myself begins with the eyes so you must dedicate most of the time to it. Here. At this side of the eye, I am repeating the same procedure of color application and using the same color palette but this one has more reflection than the previous one so try to adopt a good color ring which is close to your reference tone. I am adding highlights around the eye to make it more visible. Well, you can see that the tiger's eye is full of textures and reflections so it needs a lot of shading and highlights. Adding reddish gray tone around the eye and the lacrimal caruncle, it's a mixture of alizarin crimson purple and intense blue of Vincent and Newton's watercolor. If you don't have this series, then you can simply use red, purple, and ink blue. Now, start working at the nose with another peach wash, it's a mixture of red, white, and yellow. Oops. Here I'm fixing the affected highlighted area. So first I'm applying the titanium white and let it dry before applying another application. Then using light pink and peach color on it and blend it very gently. So you can see that how I have fixed the affected nose and successfully removed the darker values from the highlighted area. If you find any mistake, just make it correct before it gets worse because our mistakes lead us into the right direction. Finally, I reach to the tongue and believe me, it is actually the most tricky part of the face. So I begin with a dark pink tone at the outlines, then light pink wash to the remaining area. You can see how I am smudging the lighter values to the darker ones. This pink is the mixture of red, white and a small amount of cadmium yellow. I'm applying another layer of pink and purple to the needed areas. In the darkened areas, I'm using watery consistency of gray shade using zero size brush to create a texture on the surface of the tongue. Here I'm using rose pink color. It's a mixture of white and a tiny amount of red and ultramarine blue and mix them likewise for purple. I just increased the quantity of blue in the same. I'm developing a light texture with whitish pink color and adding purplish gray tone at the darker ones then blend it up. Here I'm creating the green texture by using the tip of the small brush. I'm developing a nice color contrast by using purplish gray and white and I keep blending them for a smooth finish. I'm adding white green in texture to the tongue by following the direction but don't do it in random ways. Try to add details by following the reference picture. Examine it closely so you can see all the details. I'm increasing the highlights at the curved part to show the shine. I'm applying multiple layers of rose pink, purple and white color. 
If you find any mistake, just make it correct before it gets worse because our mistakes leads us into the right direction. So be playful and keep adding and subtracting the tones. Take as many breaks as much you need to and be passionate about whatever you're working on. Another interesting thing is that there are hundreds of sharp hollow spines like scoop which are carpeted backward to the tongue and they are called papilla. But the wild cat's tongue is comparatively rougher than the domestic cat's. It's more like a sandpaper because their papilla are so sharp that's why they can easily scrap the meat from the bone. <music> I'm using Faber Castell water-based pencil colors and which are 421 red, 416 orange, 433 lavender, 434 violet, 444 navy blue and equivalent black Faber Castell pencil, 401 white, also the white charcoal pencil and the Durban Chinese white oil-based pencil. It's an optional. If you have it, it's okay. If you don't have it, never mind. Now again, if you don't have these color series or you don't want to use water-based pencil colors, then simply use any watercolor close to these tones and you will get almost the same result. Finally, I have done with the tongue and heading towards the teeth. Here I'm using water consistency of yellowish white. It's a mixture of white and a little amount of yellow ochre. Here about only two types of teeth are visible, which are the incisors and the canines. The middle small ones are the incisors, they are used for gripping and tearing the meat. And the conical ones are the canines, which helps for ripping the skin and the meat. Well, at this level I'm using 432 feet skin tone of Faber-Castell watercolor pencils to the gums. I'm also using aquarel black of Faber-Castell to blacken in the darker values. <laughs> Next, I'm adding water consistency of rose pink to the lips, afterwards adding a bit of purple in it. about the tigers and other praying mammals that why they are having darker areas around the mouth it's because darker color absorbs and protects against the solar radiations for highlights i'm using Windsor and neurons titanium white i'm repeating the same color range to develop a realistic effect For highlights, I'm using Windsor and Neurons Titanium White. I'm repeating the same color range to develop a realistic effect. Another informative thing is that tiger canines have pressure sensing nerves. Due to that, they know where to deliver a deadly bite to the victim. To block in the darker values, I'm using dark gray mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. To increase the depth and the contrast of the teeth, I'm adding yellow ochre and light gray. Another informative thing is that the stripe pattern at the top of the head of the tiger resembles the Chinese character Wang, which means the king. Now I'm working at the stripes. I'm marking the small hair like strokes, but before doing this, 
you should practice it on an extra paper. The trick that how am I marking these strokes is so simple. Just gently press the tip of the brush at the start of the line and slip it towards the end. That's it. So practice it until getting full control over the pressure and the movement of the hand. All this practice will help you in painting animals fur. But make sure that the brush isn't too wet nor the so dry. Have you noticed that during the pencil sketch I didn't add too many details? All I did to create the basic shapes and so on. Here at the fur I'm adding multiple layers of different colors to render a good contrast. First I'm applying the watery consistency of gray. It's a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I'm filling it by following the flow of the fur. And these stripes are so essential for their survivals as they act as a camouflage like a shadow in the grass and the trees. I'm adding acetones to the rest of the fur using yellow ochre as a base layer. For this I'm using 6 size brush. I'm applying watery pigment wash to the shaded areas. To achieve more vibrant effect, I'm applying cadmium orange to the skin and using the plain watery brush for blending. Once I have completed the application of the base layer, then start adding details. To develop a lighter texture, I'm utilizing off-white tone. It's a mixture of white and yellow ochre. For darker values, I'm adding gray. It's a mix of yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna. For this, I'm using zero size brush. The earthy tones of the fur blends in with the natural reeds, trees and the grass while the black stripes break the appearance of the solid forms and help the animal to be hidden in the shadows of the tree. These characteristics of the fur helps them to grow close to the tree when they are happy. I'm applying another cream gray layer to the stripes. Keep your water jars a little far away from the drawing place so accidentally it will not spill over the painting. And I keep adding darker and lighter values to develop more contrast in the depth. Take a moment to see the illustration from the distance so you can see the whole canvas which will help you to eliminate the mistakes. Interestingly, the skin of the tiger also has stripes beneath the fur. The deep pigmentation of the skin creates darkness to the fur. Well, tiger possesses two types of hairs, the guard hairs and the under hairs. The guard hairs are long and give them protection, but the under hairs are smaller and keep them bone. Over here, I'm adding the details to the ears. The color palette is the same as the rest of the fur. Tiger ears are so sensitive they can hear all sorts of sounds that may be muffled in the dense forest. I'm using yellow ochre, white, gray inside of the ear, also using black watercolor pencil.
once again I'm applying the black tone in the stripe it's a creamy mixture of ultramarine blue burnt sienna and very small amount of black shade I'm strengthening the darkness of the stripes I'm keeping the strokes flowing in the direction of the hair growth. The natural fur is not silky, but it's rough and gathered in clumps. If I found any mistake at any stage, that's easy to correct because I'm not trying to panic and I'm not rushing myself. So I'm paying attention to the clumps of the hair when rendering the fur. Furthermore, you might notice that everything is done nicely and lightly at this stage, nothing is too harsh. Along with that, I'm adding grey texture at the white areas of the fur. For this, I'm using zero size brush. For more color variations, I'm marking the pale hairs to the white fur. And there is another important tip to improve your painting is that whenever you initiate the painting, first treat the shadows and the darker values, then add highlights. Just don't get panic if the fur gets darker because it will get much lighter in the further steps. To develop the harsh lines of the whiskers, I'm using creamy white with low consistency of water. But if you want, you can use white gel pen. Whiskers are not the ordinary hairs. They are the thicker and go deeper into the skin and connected to the muscles of the nervous system. Remember, all the options are wide open towards the new ideas that might arise by observing the painting when taking breaks. And during breaks, I always try to have a complete look to the painting, that the finished objects are completely done or they need a little more effort. You must be thinking why I am adding pale grey strokes to the fur. If you notice the white fur of the tiger, you might find the greyish white shades. This is because of the reflection of the light and the cast shadows, that is due to the thickness of the fur. I'm adding another grey layer to the mane of the tiger and try to develop lighter and darker layers to the outer stripes. For fine strokes, I'm using chiseled tape of a rounded brush. For subtle highlights, I'm using creamy white paint to the whiskers and the fur. the first layer dry before applying the another one. This will help you to save the sharpness and the details. Try to work step by step. Observe the fur at the muzzle area above the eye and around the cheeks. This will let you focus on the shapes, structure and their textures. That's why practice makes us able to fix the problems and improve our technique.
treating the fur of the body by applying the base color and also retouching the stripes. Here I'm using the gray shade to reinforce the stripes. It's a mixture of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and a very little amount of red with a watery consistency. tones it's a mixture of burnt sienna cadmium yellow and cadmium orange for highlights i'm just using off white color it's a mixture of white and yellow ochre and to develop the depth i'm adding burnt umber that's it I started the fur with the darker values, then moved to the lighter ones. Applying the set of highlights to the fur by using the white paint of Vince and Newton. You can see how the hairs of the different colors are overlapping each other to achieve the beautiful contrast in the depth. you have enjoyed this wildcat tutorial if you want to see the real-time version of this lesson then check out my patreon account where i uploaded 18 real-time episodes of this tutorial from sketching to painting that's about more than 22 hours long tutorial with every step and technique green, dark green, white, burnt umber and grey. If you want to add more tones then you can add them accordingly. To create a book effect, I'm just using a white charcoal pencil and a rounded stencil. To create a book effect, I'm just using a white charcoal pencil and a rounded stencil.
at the end don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up now i'll see you in next tutorial till then take care bye bye